Uh, let's start things off with uh, talking about a paper that Julian uh, wrote that recently won a uh, first prize in an essay contest on the nature of time. Uh, the essay contest was run by the Foundational Questions Institute, uh, FQX, and uh, Julian's pr uh, paper is uh, called The Nature of Time, and it's really a uh, well-deserved uh, uh, win there. It's really a wonderful paper. And so it would be natural to start off uh, uh, with Julian describing the paper, and then I'll ask some questions to try to bring out some of the, the distinctive aspects of this uh, work. Well, the paper, the, the subject uh, of the essay competition was the nature of time. And in fact, unlike most of the other entries, I, I took this very seriously and tried to say exactly what I thought time was. Not uh, hugely ambitiously within Einstein's general relativity, but within something much more basic uh, and fundamental, really, in, in terms of the history of the subject, uh, how it all started with Newton. And the question above all that I addressed is, uh, how do you define duration? What does it mean to say that a, a second today is the same as a second tomorrow? Now, Newton, in his uh, famous Principia in 1687, gave a, a famous definition of what he called absolute time, which he says flows uniformly without relation to anything external. And he says actually specifically that if nothing whatever were to happen in the universe, uh, the viewer may be able to see me smiling a bit now, so something is happening. But Newton says if absolutely nothing were to happen, if everything froze in the universe, time would still pass uniformly. And so according to Newton, time exists before anything else, uh, and, it, and it passes uniformly. And there's a very nice quip of uh, Richard Feynman, which sums that up. He said, time is what happens when nothing else does. And the aim of my essay was to argue that that's really not the right way to think about time. Perhaps I've spoken enough for, for the moment. Uh, Craig, do you perhaps want to come in with any comments of that before I go on? Um, no, I think you can go on. I, I think, uh, well, maybe uh, for the audience, uh, um, separate, uh, you know, in the Newton quote, the, the duration, uh, what, 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 what uh, you think is important about duration and how duration was, uh, everyone talks about Einstein and the relativity of simultaneity, but uh, the, the, the other question you're interested in um, uh, about duration has, has been... Uh, not discussed as much. Yes, that's that's. A, I think that's a very interesting thing. The uh, in in fact, it was in 1898. The famous French mathematician and ast um, astronomer. Well, no, he was a mathematician really, but he knew a lot about astronomy. Henri Poincaré wrote a paper called "On the Measure of Time," and he said that there are two fundamental problems uh, to do with time. One of them is to do with the definition of duration. As I said at the start, what does it mean to say that a second today is the same as a second tomorrow? And then he said there's another issue which hasn't really been so widely recognized, but how do you define simultaneity at spatially separated points? How can we know that <laughs> my now is, is Craig's now in California? I'm sitting in deepest North Oxfordshire in the heart of England. So um, Poincaré said this, this is quite an issue. And he then went on to explain how the astronomers had had to grapple with the problem of defining definition, because for two and a half millennia there had been just one standard of time which was provided by the rotation of the Earth. And in fact it was the, or rather the stars, moving around uh, as they appeared from the surface of the Earth. And that had provided an incredibly accurate clock. It, it's actually lost only a few hours in, in, in uh, two and a half thousand years. So that's a very impressive clock. Very easy to use. Astronomers only just had to glance at the night sky at the, uh, we call it the Great Bear. Perhaps you call it the Big Dipper over there. Mm -hmm. uh, and you could tell the time uh, to within a minute or two just by glancing at the sky. 
Uh, but in the 1890s, a, a crisis developed when they found that using the Earth as a clock and using Newton's laws of motion and gravity, they found that the moon was speeding up. And this worried them. Astronomers are very picky. And they thought, well, what can be the cause? And they, one idea was, was to do with that the Earth might absorb the sun's gravity at eclipses of the moon, and this would enable the moon to go faster in its orbit. That was one theory, but the other theory which they thought was much more likely was that the Earth was slowing down because of the tidal effects of the moon on the Earth, and that this would um, mean that the Earth was not a good timekeeper anymore for, at the accuracy they wanted. So uh, that forced them into a, a crisis, and uh, perhaps after I've gone just a little bit further, I'll come back and say how they resolved that crisis. But uh, to continue with what Craig has, has, has just said, um, Poincaré clearly posed these two problems, and then seven years later, really quite independently of this issue of how do you get hold of a good clock and how do you define duration, Einstein, and actually, in fact, at exactly the same time, Poincaré himself, solved in an incredibly brilliant way the problem of defining definition at spatially separated points. And, and I expect many of the people watching this video will know about that. I'm, I'm not going to go into that question. But the way Einstein did that, it revealed the most extraordinary things about time, that in some senses space and time seem to be knit together in a way that you can't uh, pull them apart. And then, in fact, somebody moving relative to me at any speed would actually divide space and time in different ways. And uh, I think everybody knows about this. Right, right. Um, maybe maybe but we should get to your... Let me just finish, perhaps, uh, if I may, Craig, on that one. I just wanted to say I think that the a huge excitement about simultaneity meant that the other issue of duration has really been forgotten. And uh, that was one of the main things I really wanted to bring out in my essay. Yeah, I think you do a wonderful job of that. 